Good morning, everybody. Are you still awake? I know you're awake, but the previous presentation was absolutely amazing. It woke me up and made me really understand why we are here. And we are here for people, for our fellow citizens. And this is actually what Smart Cities is all about. I got the honor here today to talk about cooperation, collaboration, or uh, how I call it, cops. Because I'm again. I want to open my, my presentation with a little bit of alcohol. My friends know who I am, they know I have hobbies, they know I'm a geek. And they know I'm a gamer. And I'm quite a competitive gamer, and I'm proud of it. And I'm telling this everywhere I go. And my love for technology actually started to be very early age. I was five years old, and I got this machine. I don't know if anybody here actually knows what this is because it is plastic and good. Oh, come on, what is it? It's an Atari console. It's an Atari console. It's amazing. It was incredible. You turn it on, you have colored games. The load, you don't have to do anything. You can be a five-year-old kid with a small brother and you just enjoy it. It was magic for me. I just wanted it. I wanted it in my life. I wanted to be part of it. And little did my parents know at this point of time that this would actually spark my whole path of life. I started dreaming about being part of the entertainment industry. I was fascinated by the graphics, so at some point in my life I became a designer. I started something with informatics, so this part of my life. I became really competitive, first with my brother and then with any other group. <laughs> and it really became something that was essential, an essential part of my life. I embraced it even today when working for the Namun Foundation especially. The Namun Foundation, the Namun Foundation has become a very competitive player, and you have become really competitive as our partners. Another thing that then fundamentally changed me later on. Who knows this? I, I know that my fellow neighbors from the Western Balkans can actually say what this is. In the October Revolution, Belgrade, yes, and people came together, all people from all kinds of branches, political options, and professions that came together to get rid of one evil. And this is the time when I actually came from Germany to Yugoslavia, came to Serbia, and I actually had the opportunity to live through all of this. And at some point, I didn't think we were going to make it. I thought this guy, the system is dead to stay. And when I saw this, and my head is one of these, I am here at this point of time, so don't see me. Uh, but it actually changed my way how I looked at society and looked at the role of the individual. What is my role? What can I do for my fellow citizens? And uh, a year later, a year and a half actually, I joined the Free Number Foundation ever since I'm a freedom fighter just like you are. And talking about change and innovation, we talk here about digital transformation, how our society is changing, how technology enters every aspect of it, how it changes communication, how it changes how we interact with each other, how we interact with technology, how we interact as politicians, how we embrace technology when it comes to how we do business, how we become entrepreneurs, how we, we become part of entrepreneurs, and so on and so on. It's really, I like to describe this whole process as a wave. There are two ways how you can deal with the wave. Either you are skilled and you know how the wave functions and you can serve it. Everybody will look at you and say, well, this is a cool person. Look how he or she served the wave. You know, and you're really successful. You feel great about yourself and you break the wave or the wave breaks you and you go under. And nobody's looking at you. Maybe the, maybe the paramedics will come for you. But you can actually end up like this, and of course this logo, Kodak, is you know, a symbol for how somebody can underestimate the power of digital transformation and go under. Of course Kodak still exists, but not in the form and not in the shape they exist in that. Everybody knows this example? Yes. Absolutely great. So, we talk about this because technology is part of our society today, and we have to embrace it, we have to know how to use it. So, this technology, right? So, if the wave comes, 
you can uh, either go under, or the nature has a wonderful solution for that. Team up with others. These are fire ants. Whenever in the Amazon they get swept out of their nest, the flood comes, you know, they have to leave it. A single ant would always, no matter how dangerous they are, no, power, no matter how powerful they are, how strong they are, they would die. But nature is a wonderful solution for it. It allows fire ants to create you know, a floating uh, amount of bodies that they flow together. They're not drowning, the ones below. And it's uh, really amazing. They made these T uh, connections. It's uh, really a wonderful example of how nature solves this. And we have done this as humankind, mankind, humankind. You know. uh, we have done this as well, because when we first tried to leave our cave, you know, there were a lot of dangerous animals out there, and uh, these animals actually uh, wanted to eat you, and when we came together, we were suddenly were able to you know, develop tools, and suddenly we were able to hunt bigger prey and become more successful. So it's actually something that's really powerful. And yet another hero of my childhood, everybody knows who this is, Steven Spielberg, creator of some of the most amazing science fiction and other movies you have ever seen. And he also says something that actually is quite a big impact. He talks about collaboration. Basically what he says is, you know, if you're alone, you're just doing your thing, but if you assemble a team of people, you can create magic. And magic is what he creates. And this is something that we are embracing also at the Naman Foundation, because what else is this team of people doing? We are assembling such a diverse group of avengers and we create magic. I mean, magic like Chris' presentation. What you are, what you're doing is amazing. We are trying to take part of this magic and infuse it in our world. One of the projects that we are doing this is the smart city project. When I say smart city, everybody knows what this is. Or do I have to explain? It? <laughs> Is everybody still awake? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let me hear. I'm awake. Uh, I'm awake. Great, so I have to explain. Yes. <laughs> the smart city is not an outcome, guys. It's not flying cars. And everybody, you know, when I, whenever I talk to a decision maker who was not, who did not encounter smart city, they think that's an outcome, you know. It's not for us. That's not for Serbia, that's not for Croatia, that's not for Bosnia, that's not for my little town. This is something that works in China, in East America, in Berlin, and we know this is not true. Yeah. But this is wrong. It is not the goal. It's a process. And this is the definition of a smart city. A smart city is a better city. A smart city is a city that uses utilities, uses technology, uses tools at its end to solve traditional problems. Traffic, resources, and so on. You start now. The second you install your technology, it's obsolete. The second it starts working, it's obsolete already. So the technology is irrelevant. It's the vision you have. It's a good decision making you develop. It's a goal you have. And it's your system being part of it. And we are trying to help our system makers and help our stakeholders to correct this vision and start thinking in this manner. So what is really the challenge? The biggest challenge is, and, and yet another need to vote. You know what this is? The vote needs a vote. For Star Trek. From the intro, you know, the beginning of the original Star Trek series, they said this, they don't say this. But it's actually a fact. Talk about smart city development, the usage of technology in our cities, connecting people with the city, connecting people with people. There is literally no blueprint for that. It's the first time we are doing this. There were no apps, there were no 5G, there were no sensors in the past. So it's the first time we do this. So basically this is a challenge because we have to figure out today how this actually all comes together. So we cannot just copy something, and we can't copy something because every city is specific. Yes, whenever you, we work with a partner in some of the countries worldwide, we always get the answer, 
you get this response. We are specific. It doesn't work with us. I mean, this is a standard deal uh, response. But this is actually true. Every city is very specific. Every city has a different culture, a different layout, different people, different needs, different infrastructure, different history. There is no one size fits everybody. So actually, we have to look at every single space we live in and figure out what technologies, what solutions we can actually apply and in which order. And this is really hard work. Also, there's another big challenge. The challenge is technology and political decision making. Don't go at the same speed. Technology is racist. Depending on where you're in the world, it can be super fast. Decision making, also depending <coughs> on where you're in the world, if you're in Europe or China or the US or the Western Balkans, Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, it doesn't matter. It's very different. What is the consequence of something like that? The consequence is that you sometimes have very strange appearances. Very often technology, the decision making, the laws are not there yet. Technology can actually become something not something that empowers you, but something that takes away your power, takes away your freedom. Surveillance is one of the good examples, right? Many cities claim we are a smart city because we have a thousand cameras installed all over the city. We have face recognition, nobody can find it. I've seen people fall in this like wow, we are smart city. I fear that as a leader. So this is a process we actually have to deal with. This is a process we now have to make this happy for. Another thing, when it comes to smart city, that's really a challenge. Okay, let's say we all agree this is the way. Our partners agree with us, this is the way. Smart cities is a process we need to push our cities forward. There's a problem for the decision maker. Why? Because smart cities are very abstract. We're already talking about technology, and I'm trying not to. Imagine what the voter would say. You get responses, <coughs> hello, here comes the mayor, he's trying to install some Wi-Fi trash bins. That's not what smart city is all about. It's really hard for a decision maker, for a politician, to sell this when the competitor maybe is off stalking the street, or giving up gifts, or buying refrigerators, or whatever. You know what they do, whenever the elections come, suddenly they work on it in your street, right? Everything is being brushed up, you know this, right? It happens in your country too, it's not only my country, isn't it? Right? This happens, and it's really hard for, for decision makers to stand behind smart cities, because it, they can't sell it. They, they think in terms of not years of election periods. On the last Smart City Festival, last year, we had several politicians talking to each other, and they said, oh, I know him. He's my friend. We know each other for three terms. I was laughing so hard. Three terms, that's your measurement of time, right? Three terms, not years. I know, I know him for 10 years. No, I know him for three terms. We have to have this in mind when we work with politicians. That's how they calculate time. And we have to give them tools in their hands and ways to actually stand behind it and get re-elected. And this is a big challenge, especially part of the number. So let's start with pages steps. We have been dealing with the smart city for over seven years. And we have learned a couple of things. And I would like to share a couple of my personal insights with you. What works, what makes sense, what helped me and my partners when dealing with this topic in the Western Balkans, in Eastern Europe. And this is a not very particular order, nor are these things something that you can blueprint, copy on something in your region, but maybe it's going to inspire you. First of all, we gathered all together in something that is called the Smart City Education Initiative. The Smart City Education Initiative is a project we started seven years back. And it started like this. We came to Boston. We invited all our partners. When the Nauman Foundation first decided to deal with the Smart City topic, to be very frank, I had no clue what to do. I had no idea. Yes, I come from tech, but Smart City is no way, no different partners. 
So we came all together, we invited stakeholders, entrepreneurs, political decision makers, researchers, academia, we, everybody, we invited everybody. We came to Boston and we talked about it. what can we actually achieve because the amount of money we have is very small. How can we impact something? And it was a very fruitful discussion. What came out? One idea which I think is essential for the success of this initiative. And this is the following. We're not going to attack a particular problem. We're not going to solve a mobility in city X. Or we're going to deal with energy efficiency in the air. Or we're going to deal with education. Because this is just a drop in an ocean. What we needed to do with the small resource we have is not create an app that solves the problem, but try to create an ecosystem in which apps can be developed. So actually, <coughs> we want to create an ecosystem, we want to create an environment where the stakeholders can come together and we help them come up with solutions. That's our mission as a normal foundation. That's our mission as a normal foundation, we're doing this right now. So we're going to do something. So the ecosystem is always more important Building the ecosystem is more important than building the solutions to a particular problem. And this showed us to be right. Several numbers. 0 to 70, 0 to 70, and 0 to 1. What does this mean? Numbers are for me really important. From the beginning to, the, to now, which is 7 years, we started from 0 partners to over now 70 member organizations in this network. Stakeholders, entrepreneurs, Smart city actors from all over the region in Europe are now member of this ecosystem and they all work together, share resources to build solutions to them. And we begin and from zero and zero and nobody in this field, Naman Foundation actually has become maybe the most prominent uh, civil society player <coughs> in this region. <region's coughs> right. uh, we are the three things education, networking and matchmaking of all of us. This is our, this is what we do. We just offer education. We network them together. We allow them to network all of the reasons. And we allow them to matchmake, meaning to find the right partners. We do several very interesting projects. We do smart city challenges, all of these great stuff. But what really allowed us in seven years to happen is we became the first organization, the government, the media, and others start asking when they're smart cities. This is just the last 10 days. I'll be moderating the, the China conference, uh, Belt and Road. The government invited us to do this because they, they thought this is the best organization for them. And there are two guys over here. We have the three leading people from China for smart city development. And you have two co-founders of the Smart City Education Initiative, hardcore liberals sitting there and debating what smart city development in the region actually should be. So this is actually a very good thing. <coughs> but we also organize something that's called the Smart City Festival because we think that smart cities and all these messages need a big stage. And we didn't find it, so three years back we started to organize the Smart City Festival. This year with 60 partners, last year with 70 partners and we created our own stage and we started promoting smart city solutions and, uh, and, and products for stakeholders and decision makers only, not a public event, stakeholders and decision makers. We invited them to come to the festival and see what is really possible in our region. This year we had over 600 stakeholders come, decision makers coming to our festival, with over 150 children. There were almost 800 people coming in one day to the Smart City Festival. That was almost double the number we had expected when we, when we did. We have three stages which we talked about in the first. And another thing that I really love is even the private sector is recognizing why this is important. So we had almost 50% of our budget coming in from the private sector, supporting the Smart City Festival, supporting a player like us. And this is, I think, really, really important. Another thing, we, we talk about public shaming. <laughs> we talk about public shaming, and what do we do? Politicians say we can't do it, it's not for us. And we invite children for three years now, and they show them that this is actually child's play, and they can. So, we have the Open Data Awards, and 
I made the mayor of Belgrade wait 10 minutes for, to have a selfie, a selfie with me. Really <laughs> And if I had one more minute, I would just show a couple of things, if I may just say. If you want to do something like this, and you know this better than me, uh, dream big and fake until you make it, claim you're the best, and you know, hold to this message, message until you become the best. Network like crazy, this is what we do. Be part of the scene. Now go to the scene meetings, you know, just be there, show that you have the interest, show that you care about what they are doing. Be part of it and they will embrace you. Find the right crazy team. Find, find the team of misfit that suits your needs and they're going to help you to create wonders. Learn to pitch, learn to sell what you are doing. Uh, don't say we are the Freedom Foundation for Freedom and we do it. This doesn't really work. Say we are the initiative and we do networking, education and matchmaking. Keep always an open door, reset your mind whenever you talk to somebody, but because whenever somebody talks to you, this is a really true. They have an agenda. They don't nobody meets with you without having something in their mind, having a need. It is your goal to actually know what this goal is and to be humble. Thank these people who are with you whenever you can. Go on your knees if this is certain. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.